from around the globe. It's theCUBE, presenting Accelerating Automation with DevNet, brought to you by Cisco. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE, coming to you from our Palo Alto studio with ongoing coverage of the Cisco DevNet event. It's called Accelerating Automation with DevNet in the New Normal. And we certainly know the new normal is, is not going away. We've been doing this since the middle of March. We're all the way to October. And so we're excited to have our next guest. He's Thomas Scheibe. He's the Vice President of Product Marketing and Data Center Networking for the Intent-Based Networking Group at Cisco. Thomas, great to see you. Hey, good to see you too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and truly we're in a new normal as everybody can see in our background. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but I'm, I mean, I'm curious, we've talked to a lot of people, we talked to a lot of leaders, you know, especially like back in March and April with this light switch moment, yeah. which was, you know, no time to prep and suddenly everybody has to work from home. Teachers got to teach from home. And so you got the kids home, you got the spouse home, everybody's home trying to get on the network and do their Zoom calls and their classes. I'm curious from your perspective, you guys are right there on the, on the network, you're right in the infrastructure. What did you hear and see kind of from your customers when suddenly, you know, March 16th hit and everybody had to go home? Well, <laughs> good point. A, I do think we all appreciate the network much more than we used to do before. Uh, and then the only other difference is I'm really more on WebEx calls than Zoom calls, but you know, otherwise, uh, yes. Um, what what I do see actually is that, as I said, network becomes much more obvious as a critical piece. And so before we really talked a lot about uh, agility and flexibility, these days we talk much more about resiliency, quite frankly. Uh, and what do I need to have in place with respect to network to get my things from left to right and you know, north to south and east to west, as we say in the data center. Right. Uh, and that just is for most of my customers, a very, very important topic at this point. Right. You know, it's, it's amazing to think, you know, had this happened, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, the ability for so many people in, in, in the information industry to be able to actually make that transition relatively seamlessly uh, is is actually pretty amazing. I'm sure there was some <laughs> some excitement and some kudos in, in terms of you know it it is all based on the network and it is kind of this quiet thing in the background that nobody pays attention to. It's like a ref in the football game until they make a bad play. So you know it it is pretty uh, fascinating that you and and your colleagues have put this infrastructure in that enabled us to really make that move with 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 really no prep, no planning, and actually have a whole lot of services delivered into our homes that we're used to getting at the office or used to getting at school. Yeah, and I mean, to your point, I mean, some of us did some planning. Uh, we're clearly talking about some of these these trends uh, and the way I look at this, trends as being uh, distributed data centers and um, having the ability to move your your workloads and you know, access for users to where, wherever you want to be. And so I think that clearly went on for a while. And so in, in a sense, we, we, we prep without knowing what we're prepping for. Um, but as I said, resiliency just became so much more important. And, you know, one of the things I actually do a little block, uh, a little little uh, uh, prep before block I, I put out end of August around resiliency. Uh, you, you, if, you didn't, if you didn't put this in place, you better put it in place. Because I think as we all know, we, we started in March, this is like maybe two or three months. We're now in October. Uh, and I think this is the new normal uh, for some time being. Yeah, I think so. So let's stick on that theme in terms of, of trends, right? The other great uh, trend is public cloud um, and hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. There's all types of variants on that theme. Yeah. You, you had in that blog post about uh, resiliency and data center cloud networking, data center cloud. You know, some people think, wait, it's it's kind of an either or. I either got my data center or I've got my stuff in the cloud yeah. and I've got public cloud. And then as I said, hybrid cloud. You're talking really specifically about enabling um, both inner, inner data center resiliency within multi data centers within the same enterprise as well as yeah. connecting to the cloud. That's probably counterintuitive uh, for some people to think that that's something that Cisco is excited about and supporting. So I wonder if you can share, you know, kind of how the market is changing, how you guys are reacting and really putting the things in place yeah. to, to, to deliver customer choice. Yeah, no, it's actually, to me, it's really not uh, counterintuitive because in the end, what what uh, I'm focusing on and, and the company's focusing on is what our customers want to do and need to do. Uh, and that's really, um, what you know, most people call hybrid cloud or multi-cloud. Uh, in, in the end, what it, what it is is really the ability to have the flexibility 
to move your workloads where you want them to be. And there are different reasons where you want to place them, right? You might have placed them for security reason. You might have placed them for compliance reason, depending on which customer segment you're after. If you're in the United States or in Europe or in Asia, there are a lot of different reasons where you're going to put your things. And so I think in the end, what uh, an enterprise looks for is that agility, flexibility, and resiliency. And, and so really what you want to put in place is what we call like a cloud on-ramp, right? You need to have an ability to move things as needed. But the larger context action, which we see in the um, last couple of months accelerating is really this whole theme around digital transformation, uh, which goes hand in hand then with uh, the requirement on the IT side really do an IT operations transformation, right? How IT operates. Uh, and I think that's really exciting to see. And this is actually where a lot of my discussions are with customers. Uh, what does it actually mean with respect to the IT organization? And what are the operational changes that a lot of our customers are going through, quite frankly, accelerated right, uh, right. going through? Right, and, and automation is in the title of the event. So automation is, you know, is an increasingly important thing. You know, as, the, as, yeah. as we know and we hear all the time, you know, the flows of data, the complexity of the data, either the, yeah. on the security or the way the network's moving, or as you said, shifting workloads around based on yeah. dynamic situations, whether that's business security, et cetera. You know, software-defined networking's been around for a while. How are you seeing kind of this evolution in, in adding more automation you know, to more and more processes to free up those, those um, yeah. you know, kind of limited resources in terms of really skilled people to focus on the things that they should be focused on and not stuff that, that hopefully you can, you know, get a machine to run with some level of automation. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's a tech line I have, you know, sometimes in my mind is really going from uh, cloud ready, which I think most of our infrastructure is today to cloud native. And so let me a little expand on this, right? It's like the cloud ready is basically what we have put in place over the last five to six years. All the infrastructure that our customers have, network infrastructure, all the Nexus 9000, they're all cloud ready, right? And what this really means, you have APIs everywhere, right? Whether this is on the box, whether it's on the controller, whether this is on the operations tools, all of these are API enabled. And that's just the foundation for automation, right? You have to have that. Now, the next step really is, what do you do with that capability, right? And this is the integration with a lot of automation tools. Uh, and there's a whole range, right? This is where the IT operation transformation kicks in. Different customers at different speed, right? Some just, you know, I use these APIs and use normal tools uh, that they have in the network world just to pull information. Some customers go for and further and saying, I want to integrate this with like some CMDB tools. Some go even further and saying, this is like the cloud native piece saying, oh, I want to use, let's say Red Hat Ansible, or I want to use uh, HashiCorp, Terraform, and use those things to actually drive how I manage my infrastructure. And so that's really the combination of the automation capability plus the integration with relevant cloud native enabling tools that really is happening at this point. What we're seeing customers accelerating that, that motion which really then drives us how they run their IT operations. Right. And so that's a pretty exciting, exciting area to see, uh, given, as I said, we have the infrastructure in place. There's no need for customers to actually do change something. Most of them have already the infrastructure that can do this. It is just now doing the operation change, the uh, process changes to actually get there. Right. You know, it's funny, we, we recently covered, you know, PagerDuty and, and they highlight what you just talked about, the cloud native, which is, you know, all of these applications yeah. now are so interdependent on all these different APIs, you know, pulling data from all these different yeah. applications. So A, when they work great, it's terrific. But if there's a problem, you know, there's a whole lot of potential throats to choke out there and find, find those issues and it's all being connected via the network. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. even more critically important, not only for the application, but for all these little tiny components within the application to deliver, you know, ultimately a customer experience within very small units of time uh, so that you don't lose that customer. Yeah. You, you complete that transaction. They, they ch check out their shopping cart, you know, all these, yeah. all these things that are now created with cloud native applications uh, that you just couldn't really do before. No, you're absolutely right. And that's, this is like, as I said, I'm actually very excited because it opens up a lot of uh, abilities for our customers, how they want to actually structure the operation, right? One of the nice things around this whole automation plus uh, tool integration, cloud native tool integration is you actually open this up now, this whole automation train, not just to the network operations person, right? 
you also open it up and can use this for the SecOps person or for the DevOps person or for the cloud ops engineering team, right? Because the way it's structured, the way we built this, um, it's literally as an API interface and you can now decide what is your process? Do you want to have a more traditional process? You have a request, network operation teams executes the request using these tools and then hands it back over. Or do you say, hey, maybe some of these security things, I'm going to hand over the SecOps team and they can directly call uh, these, these APIs, right? Or even one step further, you can have the opportunity that the, the DevOps or the application team actually says, hey, I'm going to write a whole infrastructure as code kind of a, a script or template and I just execute, right? And it's really just using what the infrastructure provides. And so that whole range of different user roles in our customer base, what they can do with the automation capability that's available, it's just very, very exciting, right? Because it literally unleashes a lot of flexibility, how they want to structure and how they want to rebuild the IT operations pro uh, processes. That's interesting, you know, because the you know the DevOps culture has taken over a lot, right? Obviously, changed software yeah. programming for the last twenty years, and and I think you know there's a, there's a lot of just kind of the concept of DevOps versus necessarily yeah. you know the actual things that you do to execute that technique. And I don't think most people would think of you know network ops or you know net ops and uh, you know whatever the equivalent is in the networking world to have mm -hmm. you know kind of a fast changing dynamic. A kind of point of view versus a you know stick it in you know spec it stick it in yeah. lock it yeah, down. Yeah. So I wonder if you can yeah. you can share how you know kind of that DevOps um, attitude, point of view, workflow, whatever the right uh, verb is, has impacted you know things at Cisco and the way you guys think about networking and flexibility within the networking world. Yeah, it, literally, absolutely, and again, it's all customer driven, right? Is none of this none of this is uh, really. Actually, you know, a little bit of credit, maybe some of us where we have a vision, but a lot of it's just customer driven feedback. Uh, and yeah, we, we do have even network operations teams come to saying, hey, we use Ansible heavily on the compute side. We might use this for Alpha 7. We want to use the same for networking. And so we made available all these integrations uh, with the variety, as I said, whether these are the switches, whether these are our ACI and DCNM controller or our uh, multi set orchestration capabilities. All of these has Ansible integration available, right? Uh, the other one, as I mentioned, the uh, HashiForm Terracorp, uh, Terraform, we have integrations available. And you see the request for these tools to use that. Uh, and so that is the motion we're in for over a year now. And uh, another block actually that's out there, we just posted saying, here, yeah, all set what you can do. And then in parallel to this, right, just making the, the integration available, we also have a very, very heavy focus on, on definite and enablement and training. Uh, and, you know, a little plug, and I know uh, probably uh, part of the segment, the whole definite community that Cisco has is very, very vibrant. Uh, and the beauty of this is, right, if you look at this, whether you're a NetOps person uh, or a DevOps person or a SecOps person, it doesn't really matter. There is a lot of, like, capability available to just help you get going or go from one level to the next level, right? And there's simple things like sandbox environments where you can, you know, without stress, try things out snippets of code are there, you can do all of these things. And so we do see, it's a kind of a push and pull, a tremendous amount of interest and a tremendous uh, uh, time people spend to learn, quite frankly. And <laughs> that's another side product of, of you know the, the situation we're in, people sit home and say, okay, online learning is the thing. So these, these, these tools are used very, very heavily. Right, so. right. That's awesome because you know we've we've had Susie Wee on a number of times and I know yeah. she and Mandy and the team right really yeah. built this DevNet thing and and it really yeah. follows along this other theme that we see consistently across other pieces of tech which is democratization yeah. right democratization of the access yeah. tool taking it out of of just a mahogany row with again a really limited number of people that know how to make it work and and can make yeah. the changes and then opening it up to a software defined world where now the, the you know the it, it's this application centric point of view where the people that are building the apps to go create competitive advantage now don't have to wait for you know the one network uh, person to help them out and yeah. set up these environments really interesting and i wonder if you know when you look at what's happened with public cloud and and, and how they kind of change the buying parameter how they kind of change the the, the degree of difficulty to get projects started, you know, how you guys have kind of integrated that, that type of thought process to make it um, easier for app developers to get their job done. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's uh, I typically look at this more from a, from a customer lens, right? It's the transformation process. 
And it always starts as I want agility, I want flexibility, and I want resiliency, right? This is where you talk to a business owner what they're looking for. And then that translates into, into an IT operations process, right? Your strategy needs to map then how you actually do this. Uh, and that just drives then what tools do you want to have available to actually enable this, right? And the enablement, again, is for different roles, right? There is, you need to give sync services to the app developer and uh, the, the platform team and the security team, right? To your point, so the network uh, can act at the same speed, but you also give tools to the network operations teams because they need to uh, adjust and they have the ability to react to uh, to some of these requirements, right? And uh, it's not just automation. I think we, we, we focused on that, but there's also to your point, the the need how to extend between data centers you know just just for backup and recovery and how to extend into into public clouds right uh and in, in the end that's a that's a network connectivity problem uh and we have softwares uh we have meters available we have integrations into uh aws we have integrations into azure to actually make this very very easy from a from a network perspective to extend your private domains private networks into virtual private networks on, on these public clouds. So from an app developer perspective, now it looks like he's on the same network. It's a protective enterprise network. Some of it might sit here, some of it might sit here, but it's really looking the same. And that's really in the end, I think what, what a business looks at, right? They don't necessarily want to say, I need to have something separate for this deployment versus separate for that deployment. What they want is I need to deploy something. Right. I right. need to do this resilient in a resilient way in an agile way give me the tools and so that's really where we focus uh, and what we're driving right it's that combination of automation consistently and then definite tools uh available that we support uh but they're all open uh they're all standard tools as I, the, the ones i mentioned right that everybody's using so you're not getting into this oh this is specific to cisco right uh right. it's really democratization i actually like your term <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a great term and it's it's really interesting especially with with the APIs and the way everything is so tied together that yeah. everyone kind of has to enable this because that's what the customer is demanding. Um, and it is yeah. all about the applications and the workloads and where those things are moving, but they don't really want to manage that. They just want to, you know, deliver business benefit to their customers and respond to uh, you know, competitive threats in the marketplace, et cetera. So it's really an interesting time for the infrastructure, you know, to really support kind of this app first point of view uh, versus the other way yeah. around is kind of what it used to be and, and enable this <laughs> hyper fast development, hyper fast yeah. uh, change in, in, in the competitive landscape or else you will be uh, left behind. Um, so super important stuff. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And as I said, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because we, we started on the Cisco data center side, we started this probably six or seven years ago uh, when we when we named it application centric. Uh, clearly a lot of these concepts evolved, uh, but in a sense it is that reversal of the role from the network provides something and you use to, uh, this is what I want to do uh, and I need a service uh, thinking on the networking side to expose service that can be consumed. And so that clearly is playing out um, and as I said, automation is, is a key, key foundation that we put in place uh, and our customers, most of our customers at this point are on these, on these products. Uh, and they have all the capabilities there. They can literally take advantage. There's really nothing that stops them at right. this point. Well, it's good times for you because I'm sure you've seen all the memes in, in, in social media, right? What, what's driving your digital transformation? Is it the CEO, the CMO, or COVID? And we all know the answer to the question. So I don't think the, uh, the pace of change is going to slow down anytime soon. So thanks yeah. for uh, keeping the network up and enabling us all to get done what we have to get done and, and, and all the little magic that happens behind the scenes. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for having me. And again, yeah, uh, if you're listening and you're wondering how do I get started, Cisco DevNet is the place to go. It's, you know, fantastic, fantastic environment. And I highly recommend everybody uh, roll up your sleeve and, you know, the best resources you can have. Yeah, and we know once the physical events come back, we've been to, to DevNet Create a bunch of times and it's a super vibrant, super excited, yeah. super really engaged uh, community, sharing lots of information. It's kind of that, still kind of that early vibe, you know, where everyone is is still really enthusiastic and, and really about learning and sharing information. So, yeah. you know, like I say, Susie and the team have really built an, a great thing and yeah. we're, uh, we're happy to continue to cover it. And eventually we'll be back uh, face to face. 
So okay. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> Look forward to that as well. All right. Thanks. Uh, he's Thomas. I'm Jeff. You're watching continuing coverage of Cisco DevNet accelerating with automation and programmability. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.